Hey folks, we are back at livecoding.ca. My name is Nick Taylor, your host, and I'm hanging with Jörn, is it Bernhardt? I'm trying to use the German accent for it. I think I kind of got it. So how are you doing today, yeah. Jörn? Hi, new friend. Thanks for having me. And I would like to jump into Svelte and Connect4. Before we do that, I'm just curious uh, if you can just tell folks a bit about yourself. I'm going to drop some links about you. I dropped your Twitter and your GitHub, but I believe you're at a company called, Com is it Compose.us? Is that right? Yeah, Compose Us, just like okay. the functions and everything, basically. So, okay. um, you yeah, know, we're, we're building um, products and, uh, well, any any kind of software that public administrations need here in Germany. So we want to help them okay. to get better at their stuff. And uh, yeah, that's that's like the root cause why our company exists. And okay. yeah, that's, that's how we do that. And I'm like the CTO basically. Oh, okay. And um, that's cool. yeah, do, doing everything <laughs> around these <laughs> technical decisions and uh, jumping in, in projects and yeah, getting, getting oh. everywhere. Awesome. Awesome. Before we continue, I'm just going to drop a, a link in our virtual coffee community. Let's talk about a few things here. So you want to talk about connect four. So this kind of ties into Hacktoberfest. I spoke with Jern before and we decided to get a project together. That would be something fun to stream about connect four. It's a classic board game. Well, I don't know if it's, is it called a board game? If it's not on a board, I don't know, but anyways, <laughs> Well, it's kind of a wooden board kind of yeah. thing that you can use, right? It's it's a game. We started this project uh, to build the Connect4 game. There's not much in the repository right now. I'm just going to switch us to pairing view for a second here, and I'm just going to share the repository. I'll just drop it in the chat for folks. So, uh, like I said, there's not too much in the repository right now. Uh, I wanted, to, like I said, I wanted to talk a bit about Hacktoberfest first. So, part of the reason for creating this project is uh, we're hoping there's folks in our virtual coffee community that are definitely going to be contributing to this. But it is open to the public for Hacktoberfest. So, if you are interested, we do have some issues already. There's a couple here. There, one's documentation related. And the other one is just adding social card stuff. So if somebody shares the link and stuff. And aside from that, it's what's in the code base right now is really more everything set up so that people can contribute in it. So we have like pre-commit hooks. We've got what else, you know, the linting, all that stuff, and the contributing guides all up to date. So if you are interested in contributing to the project, definitely check out the contributing guide the readme to just how to get set up. The other thing I'll mention before we start talking about the game itself is there is another pull request open. We'll, we'll probably get it merged sometime this week, but it's to add Gitpod support. So you'll, maybe your computer's not super powerful enough, or maybe you're not comfortable just setting up the project. If you go work in Gitpod, it'll install everything for you, start up the actual game even though there's not much to the game yet. It's just an index page right now. And yeah, if you're interested in contributing, that'd be awesome. Let's get to it, Yarn. So like, I've never done any game development myself. I don't know if you have, or has it been kind of more like hobby things? Well, actually I started, my first dream job was a video game tester. And then I quickly turned into a video game programmer because, well, I oh, was okay. to play my games all the time. So I didn't want to wait for other people to, to write them for me. So yeah, that was like my, my first real dream job. So oh, okay. I somehow started going into that direction, but also I only learned like web development programming languages and stuff like that. Basically it turned more into, well, get into entertainment, get, make the things that you do entertaining and gamification, use, use that stuff. And at some point 
after my studies, I founded my very first company and we actually created yeah. a gaming platform about oh, uh, like a, an HTML5 gaming platform. So that was okay. during the time where Android 2.3 was like the latest shit. We wanted to let people play with a computer against an iPad, against the Android phone. So what, whatever you have, you okay. should be able to run it and play okay. against other people. And so we created this backend, which provided you as a dev the opportunity to build your game, like peer to peer kind of thing. Like okay. you could only, you only had to use a send function to send messages to the other players in your room and okay. a receive callback that you needed to implement in order to whatever the other people sent you so that you update the client. And everything okay. what's what's behind there, like the it needs to go to the server, the server needs to process it, finds out who is connected to that room, sends it to these people. That was what okay. we had done there. And yeah, oh, okay. we had to build an example, which was actually Connect4. Oh, it was, that, no way. That, <laughs> I don't, okay. I don't have that code anymore, so it will be fun to explore <laughs> what's still in my head and uh, where we will get to now. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. That's super cool. I didn't realize you you built a gaming platform. I, I thought when I spoke to you initially, you were mentioning that you, you had worked on a game, but I didn't realize it was a full gaming platform. So was that was real time, I guess, with like web sockets or something? Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. So, well, during that time, you couldn't really build anything like really fast paced games, right? The idea was more like, okay, try to do these turn-based games or we also built with that system something like a drawing and well, you, you had to guess what the other person is drawing so oh, okay. um, I, th yeah, I yeah. think there, there was this viral game at the time I forgot the name actually <laughs> but there, there was some, some game where people started like just draw, draw something I, I think it, it's what's called draw something wasn't it it probably not hangman hey, what's it called there there's an online version like I've, I've played with co-workers in a remote context called if you go to scribble.io so it it'll, it'll be a pictionary that's what it is okay so it's no. it's like you just somebody just starts drawing something and you're guessing in and like you know depending on the quality of <laughs> a person's <laughs> drawing abilities results may vary but but it's that game cracks me up too, because sometimes like, like when you know somebody or, or they just provide a really good clue, like I've played the game before where it's like somebody literally draws like a line or, or like barely anything. And somebody's like, Oh, it's a, it's a cow playing <laughs> guitar. And they're like, how did you get that? And then it's like, so, <laughs> anyways, it's, it's a super fun game. If, if folks are interested, I'll, I'll drop the link there, I'm sure there's other online versions, but Scribble.io is the one I've played. And there's actually another fun game. We'll definitely talk about Connect4 shortly, but I didn't think I would enjoy it. But like my first couple of weeks at Netlify, we were building a puzzle together online. At mm -hmm. first it looked pretty daunting, but then it actually was pretty fun, you know, cause it would make these satisfying noises of clicking in place and stuff. And, <laughs> and it, was, it, was, it was actually a lot of fun. So mm -hmm. there's, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of folks that, that work remote now, so there's just know there's tons of really fun games out there. So let's talk about Connect Four. And I played this game as a kid. I, I loved it as a kid. Now, I know there's varying sizes to the board. According to the Wikipedia that I have up here, it says that the traditional game, I believe it was seven columns with six rows. But that's something like in regards to the game that we're going to build and that people are going to contribute to. Those could be just options, I think. You know, like, hey, I want to play five by four or whatever. But I think maybe as we start out, we could just focus on like, like just one size, I think. And then, you know, as a nice feature later, they could resize the side of the board, size of the board, maybe. I'm going to explain the game as I remember and, and if, please fill in the holes if, if there are any. So yeah, essentially from what I remember, like if you can see, I don't know if this picture can get any bigger. Okay, so I'll zoom this in a bit. So... When I played it as a kid, it was a board similar to this too. It's just plastic. You have two players. I, I don't think you can play more than two players, but maybe there's, I feel like there's probably newer versions that maybe you can, but 
the the I know the original game it was definitely two players so yeah, I, I know that we, we had at some point something that was 3D, but it was still two players, I think. Okay. Which is really weird. Like, you yeah. stack on top and on the side and in the depth. Like, really weird. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I can't draw on this picture on the stream, but so the goal is you need to get four in a row. And it can be four that are vertical, four that are horizontal, or it can be on an angle. And in this picture, you can see there's... You can't see me clicking on it, but there's four diagonal ones there. So the person who is the yellow pieces won that game. So those are essentially the winning, the possible ways of winning. So that's something we'll need to incorporate into the logic, I think. I think that's pretty much it in terms of the logic of winning, at least. And like you said, you, you've worked on the game before. It, I mean, it doesn't matter that you don't have the code anymore. It, it, it'd be more fun anyways, just rebuilding it from scratch. It'd be kind of a little more boring if we just copy pasted what you had. I'm curious on your thoughts on this, but I feel for like the first version of this, at least maybe not use web sockets right away, you know, like maybe just have it so that two people can like they're in front of the same computer and clicking at least to get the first part out. Or what do you think? Or do you think we should go right into WebSockets right away? Because it's that, I mean, it's an implementation detail, whether you're playing remote or like literally beside each other. So what I would like to start with would be a static version so that you have basically a hot seat version. Then we can okay. use the adapter static. We don't have to think of a backend at all. Like we could, we could just build the, the game itself. Okay, and then yeah. later we could we could use all this wealth kit extras that would allow us to to create this socket based stuff. I think that would okay. be quite nice. Yes. So in terms of starting and and we're gonna we're gonna mess around with some Svelte kit, which I haven't really done yet. I messed around with Svelte with my coworker Brittany a few months ago, and then B One Mind, who's in the chat. Brett's his first name, their, their first name, I believe. He was assisting me a little bit when I, I kind of dipped my toes in Svelte kit, but I didn't really do too much. Or, or maybe it was just Svelte. I can't remember now. But all that to say is Svelte kit itself, haven't done much in it. So, okay. So in terms of like you said, making it static for now. So are you thinking we should literally build out the board and the pieces? Or are you talking more like statically building the logic or, or what do you like? What do you mean exactly? I would actually start with the board and clicking and showing something to, okay. to the user. So basically some, some CSS, some JavaScript logic. And yeah, once it's, oh. once it's completed, basically show, show a message. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, for sure. Okay, so why don't we switch to VS Code then? And okay, so I have the project here. There's nothing in it yet. So I'm gonna just create a new branch here. And I think I think what we could do in terms of like in terms of Hacktoberfest contributions is we can definitely make the board, we can definitely make the pieces, but it I think like the pieces and the board could maybe look a lot better later. And that's something that somebody could contribute to to improve how they look. It's kind of interesting. So this board game is like a perfect use case, I think, to use CSS grid because because it, it, it's literally a grid. I, I don't know what you think, but I, I think it would fit well probably. So what we can do here is, okay, so I have, like, let's start this up. I'm already thinking of, okay, how can we put like the, the, the grid, the CSS, how many rows and columns you need into, into this, right? Yeah, like exactly. Instead of doing it just position absolute and think of it all ourselves, like. Yeah, well with the grid, cause with the grid, like visually you can see like the actual grid, like we saw in the picture there. And, and then like the grid will have different, like each cell. So like we could actually like, you know, if we say like, okay, put the piece in cell, you know, one, one or something, you know, so that way we could probably build out the pieces. I just want to make sure 
if I have everything installed, am I, what am I using? Yarn or no, using NPM. So let's just do that. Okay. Now I can't remember if I had something set up or not. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I got it ready here. Okay. Just let me move this over because we don't want to see that. So we literally have nothing at the moment. This is just an index page that I created just because I bootstrapped the project with SvelteKit and the linting and the, the pre-commit hooks and all that stuff. So this is what we have here right now. So I'm going to drag it over. So maybe we can see it as we build it out and I'll drag this over. Okay. Yeah, that should be okay. Okay. And I'm going to just hide the terminal for now, just to give a bit more real estate. Okay. Now, so let, let's talk a bit about SvelteKit first because just to understand like the structure of the project if i just zoom this in a bit um, i'll just make it big for a second so the in the folder structure here so everything's in this src folder that's a pretty standard kind of thing and then the lib is where we ha we put all the components right yeah we can do that and usually, usually you have source routes for for all your routing stuff inside of the of swell kit i'm wondering yeah. where that is i hope i set up svelte kit no, there is no swell.js kit in there oh no oh no okay how hard is it to set it up i don't know how how easy it is to like override this what i usually do okay. if i have something like that i do like the init thing in a subfolder mm -hmm. and then just move the stuff in there and then do an npm okay, install gotcha, again gotcha. and hope for yeah, the best. maybe for now because like uh, we've got about like an hour and 10 minutes i think what i might do is maybe work on this felt kit after the stream maybe because like we can still work right now right like we can build out the components and stuff and then mm -hmm. uh, we can move from there okay and that makes me think of another thing that we can do is we could add storybook as well I'm not sure if, I think Storybook supports felt now. I'm not positive. I have that set up somewhere, but it was yeah. quite a hassle. So not hundred percent sure whether it's the, the best approach there yeah. nowadays. What I'm going to do is just like for the sake of stream time, I'm going to set up Storybook after and I might pair with you to get Svelte kit up, or maybe I'll do that on Friday or something. But for now, yeah, like let's build out the pieces because we do have a Svelte app running. Why don't we just build out some things here? I guess the first thing we need is we need a piece, right? So like, I don't know what you call it. Uh, I guess a uh, play piece or what, what do you call a connect for piece? <laughs> I think it's a coin. Okay, we'll call it a coin. Sure, we can always rename it if not. Okay, so that's there. And I'm just gonna copy what's in here real quick not the whole th well just that and we'll just say like whatever hello and i don't need a counter right now but i just want to have this stuff set up and we are set up with typescript mm -hmm. so i'm just going to save that and then i think it's app dots felt where the counter is yeah so let's just add a coin mm -hmm. in here for now i guess and mm -hmm. yeah it's got to auto detect it import yes thank you okay so if we come back here, okay, it's got my coin that's not doing anything right now, but that's good. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's uh, let's shrink this so we can see things. And let's get back to our felt. Where did our site go? Yeah, no, definitely skipping uh, storybook for today, Calglo. Uh, I've set it up on several projects before, but like stream time wise, uh, definitely doesn't make sense. So we have the coins there now. The other thing, just to rehash how Svelte works, we can have the script section. We have uh, the markup, like which is here. And then we can mm -hmm. have a uh, scope style, right? So I guess the first thing we want is we want a coin. I guess there's two ways we could do it. Um, we could do like a, a div or maybe some other semantic element that makes more sense maybe, but um, yeah, you can do the div with styling. There's also a SVG, but why don't we start off with a div for now? And yeah. 
I think if, uh, you know, whenever somebody goes to improve what the coin looks like, we can revisit that. So yeah, so let's do a div, not a, I'm turning this into a rated, it's not a dick, it's a div. Um, okay, so let's just, there doesn't need to be anything in it. Uh, so let's, so typically here mm -hmm. now with the scope style, we'll, we'll, you'll still add a class though, right? Like I could do something like, well, you can do that, but you don't really have to, because if you would style a div now, then it would style all the divs that you have in here. If you only have one div, then you don't really need the class at all. Yeah, okay, because yeah, gotcha. Okay, all right. Thank you, Copilot. So let's go background red and let's save that. Okay, so we got a piece there. Now we want it to be round, so I guess like a border radius. Yeah. Uh, 50%. Yeah, good old 50%. Okay, so we have a piece there and like, I don't know, maybe we could make it fancy and do a border, I don't know, uh, dotted four pixels uh, black, I don't know, something like that. Oh, uh, hey Meg, how's it going? Uh, da, da, da. It's um, Carlos with Philip, by the way. Hi, Philip. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Cool, okay, yeah. so, so, so we've got we've got this component done pretty quickly. I don't think we need any script right now, but I think what would be interesting is I don't think I've really worked with props yet in Svelte or or with the notion of props. Mm -hmm. So, because I think because we obviously have like if we go back to the image here, um, <clears throat> excuse me. There's the two, there's the two coins, there's the yellow and the red, and who knows, maybe in the future, we might even want to have different colors that they could pick, which could be like a feature, mm -hmm. but yeah. So like, I, I would want to make this red here a variable. So like, um, I guess we, what, like we could use a, I guess we could set a, CSS variable maybe, and then set that in JavaScript or do people in Svelte typically just add inline style onto it or, okay, that's what yeah. Cal, Calglo is saying inline style. Okay. Yeah, there, there are multiple ways. I think um, if we have time later, I would um, suggest to, to show you like a generic version, how you could basically um, put variables in your, in your, um, thing itself with this use directive um, okay, so yeah, that yeah. it um, creates this in the style and you can use that variable in this, in this styling here. Um, okay. But yes, uh, okay. for now, I would, I would say, why don't we just uh, remove the, um, the background and just have like red or blue inside of yeah. a round circle. Okay. And so like, like here, um, or would it be yeah, like okay, this? Okay. We, we could, we could do it like this. Or, or, sorry, um, wait, or, or how did you mean? Sorry. Yeah. I, I, w I would have just written like f the first uh, as the first step because of not doing any real styling, we could do diff and then player name um, and closing the diff just like okay. that you have like a, an R or a blue. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, R, gotcha. R for red for blue or something like that okay yeah cool gotcha or x yeah. and o or something like this depends yeah. on okay all right so let's just do display grid place item center i don't know let's do font size to three rem maybe font weight bold maybe Sorry, I haven't been writing any CSS lately, so I'm just try trying to have some fun here. Okay, so there's a red one, and I'll get rid of this extra div here. Okay, so the R we could pass in, though, as a prop for now or something, right? Or, or, or yeah, what, what right. is the term in, in Svelte? Is the term prop, or what is it exactly? I'm, I'm using uh, React terminology here, so... I think it's, it's called prop, but I'm not 100% sure. Like, I'm also... Um, building lots of stuff with React and um, not really. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. All right. So uh, you need to yeah, export so we... export let something okay, to, so to get it. Say, I'll just say, I'll say color maybe. Uh, 
I, I would probably go with Leia. So okay, yeah, okay, and we can handle other stuff on there. Uh, I guess string for now, or what do we want to make it? Uh... Yeah, probably well, we can... in the end you want you want to have like a player object, and you just yeah we want to put in the player object, and then the player object has like it's their color or their yeah. special SVG that they can buy, and you know. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. The, the, so the only little thing. So we could we could do that. So we could do interface player. For now, we'll just do color, something like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. And this is just saying missing color. So, okay. So that's fine there. But we still want to pass in. We do want to pass in the player from like the main here, right? Like sort of the app here. Like yeah. I would want to do something like the or sorry player. Mm -hmm. And we would do like this, for example. Is it is it squiggly brackets too? Like like I want to put an object in mm -hmm. here to say like uh, okay, okay, perfect. And yeah. so now if I come back here, let's save that. Okay, so you can remove this. Uh, this equals something. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's it saying? Oh, not player. Player component has unused okay but we do see it working right because like if I come not here... really not really yet because we still have in the diff there is the r is hard coded oh yeah yeah it's true uh we'll just do this one yellow okay let's save that there's the same still like you said okay so now we want to come in here and it, it's always squiggly brackets right yeah right so not okay. like javascript it's a little bit different now. Okay, so I could do this. Okay. Well, like JavaScript, I mean the dollar and then curly braces. Okay, yeah, the template strings. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so, okay. Now I feel a little more comfortable uh, understanding how it works again now. And it's the first time I'm using TypeScript in here. So I, I use TypeScript a lot, but I, I mean, it's the first time I use it in Svelte. So I wasn't sure where mm -hmm. you define these and stuff, but. Okay, so this looks good. So, so just for fun, yeah. like, yeah, okay. So we could do that and then obviously add other stuff like the name and so on. Um, okay. Right. So those but are that. Then, then you, would, you would usually import this player type from somewhere else, right? Because you need to yeah. use it in the app here and you, yeah, want, yeah, sure. you want it to be somewhere else. Well. Yeah, we could also do that. We could do... I'll put it in here maybe. So let's just do game types maybe dot d dot ts. And then let's come here. This should work. Do, do. Let's see. Okay, now if we come back here, what's it not liking? Uh, so I'm not sure how it works in, or I have to import it, I guess, directly, eh? Um, actually, I don't have to know. Sometimes you just need to restart the the Swift language server, um, which you which is like a command inside of of VS Code, and sometimes you need to import this like that. But I'm not I'm not 100 sure because if you have like a dot d dot ts, then TypeScript should actually be able to pick it up right so that you yeah. don't have to import these things yeah, but, yeah yeah it should it should pick it up um well anyways for now i'll just do it like this i can refactor after i guess but uh yeah okay, okay. So let me just close the sidebar <clears throat> okay so there's a few people other people that join so yeah so just to recap uh we're just defining some game types so there's a player so if we go to definition here Right now, not too much going on in it. We just have a color. This will definitely turn into more stuff uh, eventually, um, or maybe it could even be the coin instead of player, but for now, okay, so we're in a good place. So we have two here. We're able to render them in our kind of like playground. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Calglow is saying, should it be in a type directory? We, c we can put it in types. I'm not, sh I'm not sure how things are structured normally in, um, felt but yeah we can do a new folder sure 
So we could do types. And I actually might take Yearn's uh, suggestion of restarting to see if it picks up global types. But uh, let's do here. Whoops. Get it right. Go. Why is it not going in? Oh, it's already. Yes, move. Thank you. And cool. So there's that. And if we come back here, did it update it? Okay, yeah, it did update it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, the games.d.ts should work. Um, we could always stop it real quick and just to see. Um, like you're saying, restarting the server, but I feel like it should pick it up. Um, let's... Well, if it's called d.ts, right? It has to be... Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah I had it d.ts before. Um, so let's just go back here and try again without the import and see. Okay, so it's not liking it, but it should be getting picked up. It could be the TS config maybe. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Wor worst case, we won't dwell on it too much. Okay, so it's looking for, yeah, no source d.ts. I think it could be because it's a new file, like you said. Let me just stop the server real quick. Well, what, um, so it, it could be still inside of, um, inside of this, um, it should be, um, it, it should be okay with Vite, I think, like Vite could pick it up and be correct about it, but VS Code has this problem. So what I do is command shift P and then look for yeah. the restart Svelte language server. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, nope, that's Astro. <laughs> uh, oh. Svelte. Uh, restart language server. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think it's picking it up now, unless it's just being slow. Okay. Let's let's wait for a second and then... Ah, yeah, I knew okay. it was going to come back. Okay. <laughs> well, let's let's not dwell on it too much. So we'll we'll just go back to here to game types for now, and we can I can look at that after, if not. <laughs> um, Okay, so we essentially have the two coins here. Yeah, and uh, like Calglow saying, we can improve this and just uh, we can add a union type here. So we can do red or yellow. Mm -hmm. uh, strings, my, oh yeah, single quotes. Why? There you go. Thank you, linting. Okay, so that's good. All right, so now we can't make a mistake. Uh, if we come back to the apps felt, so like if I were to come here and say like RS, it complains now because it's not matching the type. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Cool. Nice. All right. Thanks for the help in the chat there, Calglo. I got all kinds of things going on here. Uh, oh, uh, Travis is here too. Cool. All right. Okay. So we've got the game piece in a somewhat okay state right now. So uh, I guess the next thing would be to build out the board. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, yeah, yeah, it's good, Calglo. All right, cool. Um, sorry, Calglo's got some amazing uh, emotes going on in the chat. Best, e best emotes I've seen in a while. All right. Um, okay, so let's create another file, and I guess we'll just call it board. Dot felt, and okay, so we need a script again. I'll just close the side here. Why is it not doing that? Uh, okay. And then lang equals TS. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we'll have our board here. It feels weird not putting classes on it. Well, in this case, I think we'll need to, or cause, or, you know what? I'll do data board as an attribute and then style. Okay. So I guess, Oh, okay. Uh, looks like uh, <laughs> uh, GitHub Copilot's on track. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, no, that's okay. So I'm just looking at what uh, Copilot's doing here. So we're doing a display grid. That looks good. Um, grid template columns. So we want seven columns for the, the current board. And the grid template rows, I don't think we need that. Um, <laughs> and then there's the grid gap. So that's just to give a space. I, let's just try this, but I'm gonna comment this out for a second. 
and the board seven by six so 42 divs so we're gonna do uh, for folks who aren't familiar with Emmet you can do like div times 42 and tab and VS Code has Emmet mm. built in so I'm, I'm just gonna save that and obviously this is a lot of this is something we could probably map over maybe uh, I think instead um, but let's yeah. Uh, yeah we can clean that up in a sec so if we come here we've got our two coins um, let's uh, add the board I guess so board that's gonna get auto imported okay uh, I don't see anything yet but let's add some maybe some style to it just see so we can see it and there is nothing in there, right? Like there is, um, it doesn't have a, um, a background color or anything. Oh yeah, yeah, no, so. exactly. Uh, so we could do like, this won't be permanent here, but I guess we could do background color. Let's go the blue. I'm not I'm just going to go like this. Okay. Now why aren't we seeing it? Background, background is uh, typed. Oh, back. I wrote back groomed, back groomed. There we go. Okay, so that's that's just doing width and height. So I think we need to do like uh, we've got um, seven columns, and I don't know. Let's let's give them a few rems for each, maybe like three. So like if we do seven times three, that's twenty one like rem, and then there's a gap which would be eight so i think 28 maybe i don't know uh, these are the style here i think this will be driven by props like the game board i think after you know what i mean because if we do this now mm -hmm. and the it's six columns um sorry six rows so say they were three rem each that's 18, and then there's the gap in between, which should be 7, so 25, just as an example. Um, and we what we could do is, so like each, each div needs to have a bit of style maybe, like we'll just do something rudimentary for now, like, uh, I don't know, we could do this, for example. I'm not using SAS or anything right now, so we could do this maybe, like... Um, and then we could just do something like we could give them a width of three rem, like I was saying, and height three rem. And then, uh, I don't know, like maybe a border just to see it. Uh, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that it's actually showing up. Okay, so they're there. So, so yeah, so again, like my question there is like, do you think going with the grid is a, a good idea or do you have another strategy you would want to draw the board as or? So I, I would probably create all of that like with position absolute, like, or you have a position related for the board and then position absolute, all the other things, just because I'm thinking more of how to do the animations later. Like when you okay, want yeah. to drop a coin and it should, um, fall down, things like that are probably easier to to do when you are already in this position absolute thing. But yeah, most probably you can do that with some CSS tricks anyways in that regard. And then just like use negative some things <laughs> like negative margins yeah. or whatever to, to get the same thing. But um, yeah. I'm I'm just wondering, yeah, I know I get the animation aspect, but I'm just wondering in terms of it making it more complex. Because if they, I guess if you know, I, I guess I see what you're getting at. If, if, if I were to just have them like they are right now, and like even if they had an identifier like ID11, ID12, you know, like for like the matrix. <laughs> Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean we can uh, animate to there, right? That's what you're kind of alluding to. Because we, we would have to calculate the position of each one, which 
Mm -hmm. which you can maybe do but yeah okay so i see what you mean with the uh, okay yeah okay so yeah so, since so i'm thinking of okay how should the board look like as a data structure and for me it's it's a yeah. two di dimensional array basically yeah with, it's a, with yeah, x it's a matrix, and, yeah. and y as, as that yeah. and then you have these indices and you can use these um to to multi multiply by like how big should they be and then you have the actual position where you want to, to put them to but yeah i'm like i i don't know we can try something completely different there are lots of ways how to achieve this i guess yeah. so yeah well i guess there's like the the structure itself in javascript too as well like we like the game state i guess mm -hmm. so there's well i guess there's two things there's like well, I I guess we could map the game state onto the board, right? Like, uh, okay, it's <laughs> GitHub Copilot's like, here, this is what you can do. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, yeah. So, like, we definitely need those. So, like, we would uh, we would need the game state. We, we could, okay, so it's building out the matrix here. So, it's the board. It's seven by seven right now. Um, we could start off with that um but this is something we'd want to store in external state or would we just want because it's it's something that kind of you you want the game state to be accessible outside the board too because like so you can say like the game's over and stuff i imagine right um yeah probably you want to um not put all of that into this into this board so but it yeah. really it actually depends on um, how you want to structure it. Like, is the board the whole game, or is the board really just the board and show stuff in there? So instead of the the board with this stuff, you would probably have yeah. something like a game state um, and as as a prop, and basically um, reuse that, yeah. and then check okay what's what's the change from that one state to the other ch um, thing and and then uh, yeah. do something based on that. Yeah, because I, yeah, the way I see it, yeah, like you, I think I heard you right, but the board should be passed in as a prop and then like events occur on the board that you fire events that will get, go outside the board in some parent component that will say mm -hmm. like player X said, go to this position. Then we update the board game state and then that gets pushed back in when the board re-renders again. Um, mm -hmm. But in Svelte, it's reactive, I guess. So this would be like reactive, this state? Or, cause it's- Yeah, we uh, could put that in the store. That's right. We could um, okay. use this this uh, dollar board, um, okay. board state, game state, something like that. Okay, so- mm -hmm. uh, and I, I'm new to states, but that's something like some kind of context-based uh, store in Svelte. Is that it? Um, it's not really context-based. You you can actually have like it's it's more a global state basically. Um, okay. And these these stores you can subscribe to them by just using a dollar sign dollar. Okay. Then the store name, um, okay. and 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 use it. Okay. So. Okay, so so like the store, so this could literally just be like uh, game state, for example. And yeah, then that would be my store yeah. that I could access. Okay, okay, no, yeah, yeah. I, but, I but think you, usually you put this state somewhere else, like in yeah, in in a different file. But you can also yeah. let something create the store, and then you pass the store into some component. And then okay. you have the same thing as you have with React Context, basically. Okay. Okay. So, so I think it makes sense to put it in a store because we're going to use this information elsewhere. So, mm -hmm. so let's build that out real quick. I've never, I've never created a store in Svelte. So, um, do you mind kind of guiding me through? Like, I guess first thing is, in the folder structure, where do stores usually go? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I would just put it somewhere in, in lib as well, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. I can do this. 
you know, we can always change this later, but I could just say stores. And then, so here it would just be, it's a, it's just a JavaScript file, right? It's not a Svelte file. Yeah. Yeah. Touch, okay. TypeScript file. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So game state, and then we would want to, okay. So if I want to use a store, do we import like some base store or how does it uh, work exactly? Yeah, you you create uh, you create a store by calling the function writable or readable from the from Svelte itself. Okay, so. uh, and that's just directly from okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so writable or hmm. um, should be a lowercase, but I probably have to look it up myself. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, that's okay. We can we can look it up online here. Um, let me just bring this back up. Whoops, wrong window, and people are seeing us in double. Uh, shortcut keys. Okay, here. Um, all right. So if I come in here, uh, swell slash store is the import name. So that's oh, okay. Cool. All right. Let's do that. Slash store. Okay. And so in here, do I want writable and readable or it's just writable right now? Just, just the uh, writable, but the function below, like this is the oh, yeah, type sorry. Not, and not the, this is not the... the interface. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. And so we're, we definitely need to export something from out of here. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, so, okay. so now, it de now it depends on uh, what you, what we want to, what we want to do here. Like what, what should our game state look like? We can put in any okay. object in here and um, use that as our thing and uh, okay. later update it somehow. But um, for this, for this, um, for this over here, we are creating this as a global variable now, like the export yeah. const game state equals writable. This is going to be called once and then it's global. It's always the okay. same everywhere. If you yeah, want gotcha. to make it like in an in a context, then you should create a function that creates the game state as a writable and returns it, so that you okay. then can use it just like a React context thing. But I don't okay. think that well, in this specific case we are uh, creating multiple yeah. games in the same application. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, yeah. And we, and we don't want to okay. overcomplicate it right now either. So yeah. So okay. So the writable here, like. We could have more things in the game state at some point, or maybe it'd be another store with like player scores that could be separate. But I think for today, just to keep it simple, like the state of the board is enough, I think. Mm, I think we should also put in um, the whose turn is it okay. so that we can so, use that. Okay, so uh, player turn yeah. maybe. Okay. Um, okay. And then this could be, or I'm going to build out the, actually let's define the type first. So, and actually I'll, yeah, I'll import, I'll, I'll import it after. I'm just going to do it in line for now. So we have, uh, let's just comment this out for a second. So it's, and I imagine this could be game state and I'm going to assume that writable is a generic, so I can probably do this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Nice. Um, okay. So we could have players, I guess, like it's saying, but, um, sure. Two players. Why not? Um, okay. And then, uh, player turn, maybe it could be a better number. Uh, but this could be, uh, player dot, uh, we'll just say player. Okay. Player turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, board state or yeah, mm -hmm. it's a number number. Okay, so that's a good start, I think. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we got our so state if, here. If we if we if we use a number for the the data, um, shouldn't we have like a number inside of player as well, just to? <laughs> yeah, there's well the. Well, I think like, yeah, cause it could be the, the players, uh, yeah, the player. Yeah. We can give them a number. So let's go to, or maybe player. the player has an ID or something or a name. Yeah. Or... 
I think ID is good. So let's just do, mm -hmm. we'll just do number for now. This can always be reworked. That's the beauty of refactoring in TypeScript. Okay, yeah. so that's good. And let's come back to game state. And so player turn will actually be this uh, uh, cat. And that's good. In, in here, I mean, it's the same thing, but we could, we could do this, or you could even do this, like this uh, type. Mm. It's 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 kind of pointless, maybe, because it's just going to be a number. Uh, <laughs> well, it's it's a number, or it's um it's undefined, right? Like yeah, it could still be empty, and that's why you you definitely need something yeah as there as well. But yeah, what would it, it be, be if it's yeah, well, actually, we could do this. We could do type uh, player move, maybe. Is it called? Um, I, I I would call it cell state. Okay. If if you're um, trying to to uh, put that. Yeah. yeah. I don't think or, we need to do or now, line of, or. Yeah, it it depends. I if it's in strict mode, I think it can be undefined but anyways well, let's just do it for now explicit so this will be cell state here uh player id has to be it has to be the player id always yeah. okay so i like this because we've narrowed the type more um okay that's cool okay so from here uh, anthony's saying he used to play connect four all the time yeah i remember playing it a lot uh as a kid too and I don't know if others had this too, but like if we went on a road trip, uh, there was like a small version of it that you could play in the car, which I think inadvertently we lost these like little coin pieces, but uh, didn't, sorry, didn't mean to make that symbol. I meant, anyways, coin. Um, anyways, uh, okay, so let's just define this. We'll just say there's two players right now. Um, we'll just assume they're... Uh, I guess player one and two, sure. Uh, da, da. And let's do color, red, ID one, and color, da, 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 da. ID two. These things can always, like, you know, longer term, I think when we create a game, like when it's more advanced, like this info can be passed in to create the game state potentially you know like i'm player one and player two but for now that's good there okay so player turn we'll just say it's maybe we we could also do something a little bit different instead of player being an array we could use like a tuple like an array of just two with just two elements player comma player yeah, yeah. and then the player turn could be zero or one basically the i um, the index of the of the player's array instead of the okay. player id because otherwise the player id could be like a player who's not playing inside of this specific game right now if you think of it later yeah. in. okay the player. so type color uh, is not a sign of a type player player why is it not liking these now is it cuz i didn't explicitly def these match that type <laughs> Um, there's there, there's a, a syntax error still. So the oh, yeah. the bracket understand. is missing, right? Or the bracket is in line 17 instead of line 16. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, I, I deleted it when I was... Uh... Oh, okay. I see, mm -hmm. I see what I did. Yeah, yeah. No, no. It's, that's what happened. Okay. It's still complaining because there's players... Like That, that should be a tuple, right? Do, do... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% sure whether it can be done like that, to be honest. Or is it, I can't remember, I haven't made a tuple in a while in TypeScript. Is is it just, no, it's not tuple. It's, oh yeah, it, no, is it? No, it's not. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. I, I on, think it, it came came with one version that you could put it into an array and then it should yeah. be should be like a tuple. I don't know why this is escaping me for some reason, but uh, tuple, because it's a, no, that's not what I want. 
Oh man. Okay. What's going on here? Tuple TypeScript. Here. Where did it go? Tuple. Thank you. Yeah, it's just defining it. Uh, yeah, no, it was defined correctly. So we said player, player. So no, that was right. So I was doubting myself for a second there. Um, so it should be that. Let me what just put the other. Us? Let me just put the other stuff in. Like, just let me fill it in real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's okay. It was just because okay. it was complaining about the other types. Okay, so I think what we could do is in here, yeah, we could just say first player for now. Well, again, this is like hard coded right now, but we can make this more advanced later. And so the board state should be uh, um, an array. Then, um, in line eight, the player term, we should just say zero comma one or zero or one, sorry, union thing. In here? Yeah, should be zero yeah. or one. Oh, you mean one or two, right? Or IDs. That, yeah, okay, okay, we can can also do that. I would just base oh. it like uh, zero based. So I I don't know in 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 game development you usually uh, loop uh, over all your stuff like the who's the next player and you just say plus okay. one and then modulo and the whole amount of players like in okay. your array, so that it restarts at zero. It goes back like that okay. all the time. So you don't have to do like an, if this is the last number in this array, then okay. uh, set it to something but, else. It's, but if it's zero it's, or one, like zero would be the empty state and then, or no. Zero, no, no. The, the, the player zero at index zero. Okay. And then, yeah. The, uh, yeah, okay, let's do that then, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. whether there is like a different um, thing that you can that you can actually use. Um, okay. Oh, sorry, that needs to be in line eight, not in line seventeen. Uh, oh, sorry. What did I do? So over here, it needs one or zero, and in here. line eight, yeah, zero or one. Yeah. Okay. And then these should be the IDs, though, should be zero and one, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, All right. And the, then the, the IDs, we, we don't actually need them anymore. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I see what you mean, because we know it's always going to be two players, at least right now. And then if we Yeah, and then it. cell states would be the, the same as the index. So like yeah. we, we still okay. have the cell state where we use the ID, but we can now use zero or one or undefined. Okay, in, so in this would state. be new array of uh, six by seven, right? So seven column, seven dot fill, uh, new array of six, fill zeros, right? For the game state um, or? It should be undefined, I think, for all of them. Okay, undefined then, yeah. Okay, so if we do that, then I don't need to do fill. Okay, so if we do that, uh, I just want to make sure in the console. So if we just come here real quick, whoops, wrong console. Yeah, I think that makes sense what you're saying. Uh, let's just zoom this in a bit. Yeah, okay, perfect, yeah. So we'll get, yeah, empty, empty. Yeah, so I think that's okay. Uh, okay. If I go to... I can't read it, if I, but this uh, is because of my connection and everything is a little bit blurry here for me. But. Oh, the, oh, the thing's blurry? Okay, uh, that's my bad. Um, but if we do a zero, zero, it should be undefined. Yeah, okay, it's all good. Yeah, so that makes sense. Okay, so, and then the cell state here can't be player a player ID anymore. It's either, um, what would the cell state be? then be now zero, one or undefined, right? Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, okay. And that's to, uh, so that's either the player one or player two or nobody's put a piece there. Yeah. Okay, so, okay. So we've got our, our store now. 
Now, if you this, like, like if, if if this were a TypeScript Tuesday, we would probably name the zero and the one into something else, like just a type first player equals zero, for type yeah, yeah. second player equals one, and then um, uh, we could you do would that. We use could these names. Players, we could do this zero, one, and then you could just do this, I guess. Um, sure. Yeah, that would be. So possible. And this would be uh, player. Uh, again, we can always refactor this, but okay. So that's good. Um, all right. So we have some semblance of a game state. Uh, I'm just doing a time check. We've got about 23 minutes left. Um, but uh, one, I'm, ex I'm enjoying this though, because one, uh, I'm learning about Svelte Store. Uh, it seems like a, a pretty easy way to create some kind of global state. So now that we're exporting this game state, so now if I if we come back to the... Uh, we wouldn't want to expose it directly in the board. We'd want to pass it to the board, right? Like uh, that we have here as a prop, I guess. Well, since since we already have it as our global variable, we can import it directly inside of the board, okay. I would say. So let's do that. Okay, so now if I were to import a store, you said I have to do dollar sign game state? Or how um, do you... Yeah, you, you use um, just the import of that store. And later okay. when you use it inside of your template uh, okay. um, or inside of your script tag here, then you should use the dollar sign. Otherwise you need to do the um, store name dot subscribe and then have some callbacks in there. And okay, I gotcha, gotcha. It's a lot easier to, to use the, this, uh, this here. Should be from, is, is it right? from missing? Oh yeah, thank you. I'm like, why is TypeScript screening at me? Okay, so now if we want to use it, like you said, um, would I just put it in directly or would I put that into another variable first or? Because like you um, said, I, I would, use, I would it... use it directly, like um, okay. with dollar game state and then the zero, zero, dollar game state, zero, one, something like that. That's okay, how gotcha. you would uh, use it here in this. Okay, so we could kind of map over the divs to fill in the game state maybe? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so let's do that. Um, okay, so uh, in Svelte, it's not a map like of an array. It's, okay, I guess it's a each. <laughs> I, 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 should, I should turn off uh, Copilot, uh, but it's No, it's okay. no, it's, it's actually great because like, ah, okay, yeah, right. Like it's, that's how the syntax works at least. Yeah. And yeah. and you okay, so, you see a lot. So it's it board... it's a little bit different for us, but uh, in general, looks yeah. pretty pretty good. Okay. So, so as board... as row and um, it uses i as an extra index. So um, the row itself yeah. is there, and then okay, yeah. cell. It wouldn't be cell. It would be because cell dot right. No, what is this? Cell is cell state. Oh, it's zero or one, right? Yeah, should be a zero, one, or undefined. Yeah. Well, in this case, okay, I see what it's doing. So, if if we're zero, one, we we put the particular coin. Okay. Yeah. So zero, zero, one, or undefined, we don't do anything. So, so if cell equals zero. Or one. It's not a string. Oh yeah, sorry. It's a number. Uh, okay, so then we could just. Uh, it's not a. At this point, it's a coin we're putting in here. So, okay, let's import that, and then, so player would be. Okay. Uh, it would well, be from the that. game state, the yeah. number. Yeah. So hold on a sec here. So this would be, because if we go back to the game state for a second, it would be the player, but hold on a sec here. There's, 
yeah, the board state is it's one of the players, right now, but it's one the of the players, but it's zero or one. But we don't have uh, the player isn't like the player still needs a oh, it's the array index of the game state. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so let's come back here. So uh, let's see here. So yeah, board state. The coin player equals dollar game state dot players and then the array index basically. Yeah. State uh, players zero. Or in fact, we could even do the, the cell. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But if if it's undefined though, actually, we could just do this if cell. Then, then use a just... coin for this with the cell. Yeah. True. And then you don't need that. But we should still have an else, right? Like an empty thing. Yeah. Or maybe maybe we don't actually need it. Okay, well uh, let's see what this does. So if we save this, okay, it's calling these data cells right now. Uh what did we call data board div? Okay, we can call them data cells too. I don't know, sure. Uh if we just come here. Okay, so if I save this, in theory, we should have... Okay, it looks like we got uh, something well, they, here. They are all, they are all um, undefined right now, so... Oh, yeah, that's it right. It shouldn't be a difference, really. But if we, yeah. if we start, like, change some stuff in the, in the game state, like, for example, yeah. set, set the first, first few... Um, just said it um, at, at some point um, that we have uh, one, one for player red and one for player yellow or something, then we should yeah. be. How, see how do you do like the that. else in, uh, in uh, stop? Uh, colon else. Like that? Uh, colon, not um, the oh, two colon. dots. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I, I just. I'm just doing this for fun. I just want to set the second color, which would be yellow, I think. Okay. okay, it's putting, okay. So it's putting them in. Obviously, th things aren't fitting in and it looks terrible right now. But um, okay. And if we did zero. Okay. So, so clearly it's undefined to begin with. Um, when it's undefined, I, I, I kind of agree with you. I don't think we need to put anything in. It's just like we could have a visual in the game board like... Like we could even maybe do something like this just for uh, the data cell. Like if we did just to show it um, white and then uh, border radius. So just thinking just of the in, in, the, in the end, um, it looks great if you have like a nice background Mm -hmm. like a PNG and um, then you have a transparent color for the empty cells. So the background yeah. shows through it and um, the, the gaps should be like just a wood kind of thing yeah. or something like that. Then it just looks like, okay, someone really made a yeah. nice board here. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's a good call. So like, let's see here. So I'll just put, uh, you know, use a png for board background and use transparent for cells uh transparent bg for cells okay yeah yeah okay so this is it's starting to come together obviously it doesn't look amazing right now um, but it's, it's more the, uh, getting the ideas here. Like this is like I was saying at the beginning for folks, if they're interested in contributing to the repository, we have a couple issues in there right now, but we're going to be adding more like based on what we're doing today. Um, okay. So the game state. Okay. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, the, yeah. And the, the players for now, red and yellow is fine, but like we can do whatever after, uh, the turn and then, okay. So that's that. Um, I'm just trying to think what else, like at this point, 
it's not like too developed yet, obviously, but um, let's see. So when, whenever you click a row, it should do something, right? Like it should put yeah. on the, yeah. the end and of it. It would probably, and in fact, we want it not so much on the row, but the cell itself, sorry. right? Uh, the, no, the, the column, sorry. On, on the column yeah. we want it, so. Oh yeah, that's right. Sorry. Yeah. It's not, yeah, it's the column. Cause it's not like I can pick a specific one. It has to fall down. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, so that would be the first cell of each, uh, row. Sorry. It would just be the first row actually. I'm wondering, I think, I think right now, um, what, what we do here and we relied on copilot to tell us this. Um, it uses row and then column, but I think we, in our own state, we have column and then row, right? Yeah. Like we have, uh, if we come back here, we've got we column seven, and row. Yeah. Then, yeah. So like the first row is the, is the column, like the first row is the top of each column. So mm, I, I see what I, you I, mean. So, so in the in the game state here, the board state, when we have yeah. this two dimensional array, it should be all the the things, but mm -hmm. um, it should always go like okay, it builds it like this, like seven, yeah, and then six cells. So yeah, well, what we're, the, we're um, using x and and y then yeah for, for this. and. Uh, what was I going to say, uh, uh, Travis mentioned it before, but yeah, we could do the ID with X, Y, because actually what you could do is, um, you could just have one click event on the board and like, depending where you click, you can get the element. Like when you, when the click fires and we could say like, okay, well, if the ID is like one one we know that's the first column or anything one comma is always the first column if it's two comma it's the second <laughs> column so it doesn't matter where you hit and and the nice thing about that is we literally only have one click event then uh for the whole board um <laughs> okay. i i think so that you can actually uh, make it easier with with the uh, the way we have it right now, um, where you don't need the IDs at all, because we are already yeah. building up the, the columns inside the, yeah. the board that swells. Um, and we can, we can use these first divs to say, Hey, here's a non click handler. And then have it there. Okay. So, so in the board swells and, yeah. um, we should rename this everything which has row right now should be column. Yeah. Well, it's actually each row because it's, it's, it's going to build the row, 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 you know? So like each. Mm, yeah. Okay. Well, no, maybe, maybe I'm misunderstanding because you know what I mean? Like the first it's, yeah. it's creating a first div. And then in there, it's adding one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it's looping going next row, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. At least that's how it looks like here. Okay, wait. Um, we are using the grid template columns. We are saying seven pieces. So we are actually... Like we so, don't even need this outer row potentially, honestly. Uh, yeah, that's, that's right. The thing what we are doing is basically we're saying, um, okay, I, I was looking at it like Copilot um, mentioned it like a table, right? Like yeah, you have the columns first and then the, the cells based on the, the rows then that you would have which is how we yeah. structured our board, board state. So our board state yeah. is still not like a row. It's, it's still using columns. Um, yeah. That's but they're individual my... cells. Cause like if like maybe, maybe I'm misunderstood cause like 
I've never done game development, but I wonder if like it just makes sense to just have this as like, like, like this. Uh, but like you're saying, you might not need the. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, you know, that's, they, and then uh, that's what Travis it was uh, was saying there, right? Yeah, you can but also, you're saying instead of doing that, you, what's uh, maybe I misunderstood what your approach was without using the ID or like the identifier. Well, you have the identifier over here already, so you could um, basically say, okay, this is the on click. Um, you, you can add the on click in each of these um, of of these of these uh, rows. Uh, so, okay. Sorry, of these columns. If we yeah. had the the columns there, actually, and. Uh, yeah, you could you could also say okay, let's um, let's have one um, create like a factory for click handlers, and you give it the column ID, and then based on that you select the the correct column okay, click so you... handler. <laughs> okay, because I, I I'm just thinking like from from a web dev perspective, like if if there's some kind of metadata information about the cell we don't need to register like if there's 42 cells we don't need to register 42 on clicks it could literally be one on click that that's my because i'm thinking mm -hmm. as well um the well because it's also like registering a lot of events like i'm not sure how it works in svelte but like because you can basically decide based on what the target is when the click happens that that's why i'm thinking mm -hmm. like the one click makes more sense but um unless there's a compelling reason for each to have it um because like yeah so basically if you wouldn't use the the css grid and you wouldn't have like 42 divs in in a row and mm -hmm. uh, make just the grid do its thing there. Um, we could still use, but we can we can still use for all of them have the same on click handler and reuse the same on click handler um, because we actually want to have that only if we say like okay you may only press on like the very first row um, okay. as a user. But okay, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. I was, I don't know. Yeah, I, okay. I would, I would like to be able to to click on the whole column and then it drops as far as it can. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. I see what you mean. For the you're you're talking more about the animation part of it. Mm, because, yeah, because like if you well, have if you have a if you have each div that has seven. Or sorry, six. Six. Like so, it, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven divs, and then in each of those, it has like vertically, it has set, uh, six each, and then that's yes. why you're saying click on. Okay, yeah, I think that makes yeah. more sense. So then, to do that, then, I'm just then you would have only six um, click handlers. Uh, sorry, seven. <laughs> we are in columns. Seven yeah. click handlers instead of forty-two or 42 times the same click handler or we can still yeah, have so the you, same you, click handler for well you could even still have one like even if you go with the columns like you're saying which i think makes more sense you could still have the because that would work for the animation for it to fall down as far as it needs to and but you could still have one click on the board because you could tell which column you're in and then you you know what I mean? But, but I, I yeah. do agree with you. It, it makes sense what you're saying now about the column. So, so basically, um, I'm just trying to think of the markup for that now. So basically the game board state, if we go back to that, cause it's, it's driven by the game board state here. So I think we probably want six by seven then. Is that right? You know what I mean? Cause like well, there's some, some columns. Because there's seven columns, and then at least in a, in our current uh, way we're designing it, it's seven seven columns, and then each column has six in it. So one, two, 
yeah, I mean, it should, each one, sh it does make sense. I guess it's, uh, maybe it's just the way it's rendering in the, you know, you know, it'll help actually visualize it better is if we come here and then we just put in the, the IJ just to see it. Right. That's, that's a good idea. Is it, cause I, I, I know what you're getting at. It's just like visually I'm, I'm, I, I'm not seeing it right now. Uh, so we could do this and then. Uh, you, you, you don't need this, uh, the template string itself. Like, um, you can just use curly brace I and then comma oh, okay, and okay, then okay. curly brace J. Okay, gotcha. That's something you, you well, can you do that in React? I'm forgetting, but okay so this is what i wanted to see so like all the columns mm -hmm. going the wrong way we want it down 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 so that's why i'm thinking if we come back here for a sec just humor me uh no it's not going to change anything it's it's not that it the problem is the way the markup's getting generated um so we do we do want this we do want a div then like outside so each row in fact this should be renamed more like this should be column mm -hmm. just to make it a little more clearer and then this should be uh yeah that makes more sense and then the column would and have... instead of i and j we could also call it column index and row yeah. index i think that yeah yeah exactly. uh, that, that's the that's the row that's the row index for j yeah might as well just refactor it okay and then uh, whoops there's also uh, one more thing after that um, yeah yeah in, we're, in line, we're... <laughs> In in so, Lantern, yeah. just just a just a minor swell thing. You can um, have div data cell um, equals and then a regular string, and okay. inside of that string you can um, use the curly braces again. To oh, okay, like, just like this. Yeah. So you okay. don't need to create this extra um, okay. curly curly braces template maybe... string thing. And this is data column. And that's that's what would wrap the things, right? Yeah, but it should be outside of the each thing. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh there. Okay. Uh all right. Um we're pretty much at two o'clock, so uh I, I can't believe how much time flew by, honestly. Um <laughs> but let let's just come back here and okay, so already we've got it in a better state. So this is how we want the game board state to render. And now, like you were saying, um, so what we could do is we could actually just do this. We could do data column equals uh, call index. And then when we come here, like when we were to click on it, we would say like if call index is one, you know, drop it down there, drop it down there, exactly, something like that. Um, okay, this is... I, I'm a well. I'm amazed how how much time we spent on this in a good way. It's just I I can't believe it's already two o'clock. We started at yeah. We started at twelve thirty. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm super excited about this because I learn a few things here. Well, one just some insides of of game development. Um, the uh, using Svelte Store that's something new to me. I I'd heard about it but I hadn't actually implemented it anywhere yet. So it's good to see that in place. Uh, thanks, Calglo, and uh, thanks, B1Mine. Um, yeah, I'm still a Svelte newbie. Uh, Yearn's a little more seasoned than me and, and is a, was or is a game developer still, so uh, I definitely appreciate the, the feedback. And uh, Well, you know. Uh, but but I like, I like, obviously, this doesn't look amazing right now, but we got it into a good state where we have the proper game state, and now it's just a question of implementing some other things. So... I think, uh, oh, no, no worries, uh, Frankly Gamer. It's all good. Um, thanks for popping by. Uh, we're actually just wrapping things up for today, at least. Um, but, yeah, no, this is great, Yearn. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, learned, learned a bit about uh, Svelte Store, 
just actually even using Svelte, like you were saying, like with the strings and not having to use curly braces and template strings. So that's super helpful mm -hmm. to me. Um, we got some beginnings of like the coins and the board. Um, we do need to convert it to Svelte kit at some point. I'll, I'll probably do that. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll definitely need your review on that. Um, another thing we can get in place if anybody's interested, I mean, uh, I can definitely get to it if need be, but like if somebody wants to add storybook to the project, I'm going to create an issue for that. Um, I've, I've definitely worked with storybook quite a bit, but never has felt. So, uh, I'm not sure about the setup there, but, uh, anyways, um, no, this has been really great Yern. I know we're a little over time here. So, and I know it's a little later in Germany. So I, I really appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me today. This was like a lot, a lot of fun. And it's like, it's just kind of just fun digging into stuff here. So this is really great. Um, so yeah, thanks for that. Um, I'm just going to drop some links for Yearn again. Um, Hacktoberfest, if folks haven't uh, registered yet, if you're interested in that, just check out the links I dropped there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I think I'm going to stream a little bit on Friday uh, on my own, or uh, if you're around here and you're welcome to join, but uh, I'll probably do that. Um, other thing I'll just mention is Wednesday, which is the day I usually stream. Uh, Yearn's on today because Twitch was down on Wednesday last week. But this Wednesday coming up, uh, I have Josh Goldberg, who uh, knows TypeScript pretty well, works on the TypeScript ESLint project, and has a new book out called Learning TypeScript. Uh, he's going to be joining me on Wednesday at 5 p.m. UTC. You can check it on the schedule. Just head on over to livecoding.ca slash schedule. Looking forward to hanging out with him. And yeah, thanks uh, thanks for some, some new folks, CalGlow, Frankly Gamer, and... I missed somebody else, but thanks everybody. Sure, Meg. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Meg's too. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, you're in, uh, before we go, uh, anything you want to let folks know or, uh, just, um, there's, uh, like just this, I, I, I guess I need to, I need to, uh, do something with this new column div there and either I'm giving you a pull request for how to actually change the store that we only created okay. to read it right now, but we actually created yeah. a writable store. So we should have to, to write it. Okay. Um, that's, yeah. that's something that I want to do. Um, definitely. So that you can see how, how it works there. Um, okay. and yeah, the game loop will be a little bit different, I think. And we need to think of this as a separate issue again. Um, okay. how, how we actually loop through, the turns and yeah. stuff like that. We also okay. no, uh, talked right. about the X state and things like that, what we could do. And there's so many things that we can change and, and do. Um, we, we should probably use something like, a, uh, okay, how should the roadmap be? If you want it to yeah. be open for all the Hectoberfest contributions, then and other people want to want to help out here. And we definitely should yeah. have some kind of roadmap. But, um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to yeah put out some issues for sure. Uh, I'm going to commit this code here. And um, let's see here. Sure. Work in progress. Game pieces. And yeah. Okay. So thank you, Linting. Uh, okay. I'm going to push that up. Folks can check that out. Um, yeah, here we go. Cool. Okay, and right. uh, one one thing that I want to mention is each Friday we do a little CSS battle dot dev, uh, okay. where we actually work on CSS problems from CSS battle dot dev, which we found, which is really nice, and uh, people are sharing that in the co-working room of Virtual Coffee, which okay. is uh, really cool. Especially since I saw you doing the centering of uh, of stuff inside a div grid, a display grid, okay. where I yeah. usually use well flexbox and justify and align items and stuff like that, and other people use the margin auto and other things to to center stuff. And there, there are lots of things that you can learn from seeing other people how they 
try to um, create these little things that you can see there. And uh, yeah, that's usually on Fridays at, uh, at 11, okay. I think. Yeah, okay, cool. No, yeah, East, definitely Eastern time. Check that out. Cool. Uh, All right. Um, well, I have a meeting now, so I definitely have to leave. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, but again, uh, thanks again, Yaren. This was so much fun. Uh, I'm also very happy I added some animations to my alpaca on the stream, and uh, the alpaca is currently drinking a, a nice drink, maybe a Mai Tai. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll see you folks Wednesday, 5 p.m. UTC with Josh Goldberg and all things TypeScript. And yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks again, everybody. And thanks again, Yern, thanks uh, for, for hopping on today. Later.